you're still employed by us. I don't know. Sean, do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, I do, sir. And I've had this conversation with you before. We can't trust what you say and what you see. We can't have you in our uniform. I'm calling you on your integrity. How does that make you feel? I'm learning from it. Are you angry with me for it? No. I don't. Do you understand it? Yes. I don't get angry with, with this because, one, I have no experience. Before I came here, I had no experience. Two, I wasn't allowed to do this right here. I was not allowed to review my videos. This is termination. I'm getting goosebumps. This is extremely concerning. Everybody likes you. I gotta be able to trust you. Was this a purposefully done lie? No. I I full honor I still believe that I was on North Madison until you just pulled up Google Maps and showed me in the daytime. <clears throat> this is gonna get deeper because you're gonna have a hard time answering some questions here real quick. Okay. Now, Sean Grayson's thoughts behind shooting Sonia Massey have been revealed for the first time after Sangamon County released the deputy's personal police report that he wrote after the shooting. News Channel 20's Carson Gordy joins us live in the studio now after reading that report. Carson, what does it say? This is one of the first times that we are hearing about what happened that night on Hoover Avenue from then deputy Sean Grayson in his police report. Grayson writes that he believed that Massey was going to kill him with the hot pot of water. Grayson wrote that Massey asked him to come inside. The deputy was inside for several minutes as he asked her for identification. During this conversation, Grayson noticed a hot pot of water on the stove and he told Massey to turn it off. Massey walked over to the kitchen, grabbed the pot and went towards the sink and turned on hot water. Grayson stated that he drew his weapon on Massey after she said she rebuked him in the name of Jesus. Grayson writes in his report, he believed that Massey was going to kill him. With a gun pointed at her face, Massey ducked behind the cabinet and Grayson got closer to see if she had a weapon. He wrote that as he got closer, Sonia stood up and threw the hot pot of water at him. Grayson reported shooting at Massey and her falling to the floor. Other official reports say that Grayson fired three shots, hitting Massey in the face once. After the investigation, the Illinois State Police said that Grayson was not justified for using his gun in fatally shooting Zani Massey. He compared the scenario to an officer intentionally and un unnecessarily putting himself in front of a moving vehicle and justifying the use of force because he was feared of being struck. I'm Carson Gordy. Back to you. Wow, thank you, Carson. Grayson was charged with three counts of first degree murder and he could face up to life in prison. Sangamon County State's Attorney John Milheiser says he will be the lead prosecutor against Sean Grayson. The county says there isn't a conflict of interest of Milheiser prosecuting a former Sangamon County deputy. Milheiser added that he plans to hold the criminal trial in Sangamon County. However, the defense can still request that the trial be moved if they feel Grayson cannot get a fair trial in Sangamon County. Any request for a change of venue would have to be approved by a judge. And coming up later tonight, Sangamon County board member Sam Kamen is calling for a referendum for Sheriff Jack Campbell to be added to the November ballot. We're going to have that full story coming up on News Channel 20 at 6. Another Sangamon County board member calling for the sheriff's resignation. Thanks for being here tonight. I'm Dawn Sterling and I'm Stacy Skrizak. It's been nearly a month since the shooting death of Sonia Massey. A Sangamon County deputy killed her inside her home on July 6. That deputy, Sean Grayson, now faces charges. And tonight, that board member says the sheriff needs to go for hiring Sean Grayson and voters should have a say. News Channel 20's Carson Gordy joins us in studio with the latest. Carson. Sangamon County board member Sam, Sam Kamen wants voters to decide if Sheriff Jack Campbell should step down. He says he will ask the board to approve a resolution to add the question to the November ballot. He says that he would vote for Campbell to resign for hiring Sean Grayson with a record of two DUIs, serious misconduct from the military and allegations of wrongdoing while employed at Logan County. I would, but it, it's really not important how I would vote. What's important is how does how the majority of the voters of Sangamon County vote on this. Sheriff Campbell Campbell isn't answerable to me personally. He's answerable to the whole electorate of Sangamon County. If this resolution makes the ballot and a majority of the voters say that Campbell should resign, the sheriff would not be forced to resign. Sheriff Campbell told me on Thursday he will not be leaving his position. I'm Carson Gordy. Back to you.
Thank you, Carson. County Board Member Tony Del Giorno and Mark Ayers are co-sponsors of that resolution. The Sangamon County Board meeting is next Tuesday. Well, Sonia Massey's family has also made calls for Sheriff Campbell to step down from his position, and parts of the community have echoed that sentiment as well. With continuous calls to make changes to the Sheriff's Department, hiring practices, as well as repeating those calls for his resignation. Since Massey's death, the community has come together in support of the Massey family in protests, rallies, healing talks, and this weekend, a motorcycle ride. News Channel 20 has received the report Grayson himself wrote the night of the shooting. In his police report, Grayson writes he believed Massey was going to kill him with the pot of hot water. Grayson wrote that Massey asked him to come inside. The deputy was inside for several minutes as he asked for her identification. Grayson stated he drew his weapon on Massey after she said she rebuked him in the name of Jesus. The full report is up on our website. And Sangamon County State's Attorney John Milheiser says he will be the lead prosecutor against Sean Grayson. The county says there is not a conflict of interest of Milheiser prosecuting a former Sangamon County deputy. Milheiser added that he plans to hold the criminal trial in Sangamon County. However, the defense can still request the trial be moved if they feel Grayson cannot have a fair trial in Sangamon County. Any request for a change of venue would have to be approved by a judge. Oh, you heard that dribble of him literally trying to say, I feared for my life. She had a pot of boiling water. And like I said in previous videos, this woman would have had to, um, she grabbed the pot holders and throw. She had to have heaved the water to even get it near him. If he perceived that she was going to throw boiling hot water, he could have turned the stove off himself and poured the water out. He could have turned, turned it off or had her while she looked for her ID and all of that, which she shouldn't have been doing anyway. He should have been gone after not finding a perpetrator. But to say that he feared for his life, they can never come up with a good enough excuse. It's always the same thing repurposed. He cannot even come up with a good enough explanation to why he did what he did because he wanted to, to end her. That's what he wanted. He wanted to. He created a whole scenario in his mind of she called him out there basically saying she's lying. She is lying about um, someone possibly around her house that she broke her own window. Like this is a whole drama set up from law and order to in order to get him out there to hurt him because he's a police officer is what he's saying. He's sticking with that and everybody else is looking at him like he has lost his damn mind because he has. This woman was not aggressive. She was not mean. I would have thought if she wanted to take them out or at least one that when she was outside and she um, was getting her robe and everything, she would have had a weapon on her because she was close to them. That would have been the easiest way than to throw water on them to possibly burn yourself and having to pick up this water and have the strength to throw it. She rebuked him because that was never her intent and she was complying with the officer. See, you're complying in any way means nothing. So everybody who is talking that BS about you complying as a black person is full of ish because this woman was complying with everything that they said, even though she did not have to let them into her home. Him giving a statement as if he's so fearful. What else is a murderer going to say? What else is he going to say? They all say the same thing. They fear for their life, you know, when someone's complying. They fear for their life when somebody is running away from them and they had to shoot them in the back. They fear for their life when somebody is calling them names and cussing them with their hands behind their back, can't do anything to them. They fear for their life when they have somebody on the ground handcuffed with their knee on their neck. They're just, they're just always in a constant state of danger, especially when the person has melanated skin. But to listen to his dribble, he doesn't even have a defense for this. He had no reason. He... He was looking for this scenario. He was looking for this moment to harm someone. I mean, you listen to everything he says. She's crazy. She planned this. All of that. He is making all of this up and she could see what was in him and he's making this up. That's why I said he's in an agreement with it. He wanted to take a life. He's no different than Wade Wilson. No different. The only reason he's regretting anything is because he's in trouble now and he wants to get off like wait he wants to plead insanity until all the phone calls from the jail came out that that was his plan even though he's perfectly sane and know what he was doing he is saying he's not guilty he shouldn't be held accountable
because he he murdered someone and he was not in danger because he wanted this scenario he wanted himself to be in a scenario where he's in danger and he was able to take out the person who was causing danger to him he wanted to live that that's probably why he became a police officer and as far as the chief he needs to go and there's a reason why he needs to go because Grayson Sean Grayson is a DEI hire he was not hired because of his good record, his knowledge of the law, um, his expertise, his record. I mean, he has had six jobs in the last four years. If that's not major red flags, then I don't know what. If the audio of him being reprimanded and fired, come on, how did he get another job? He's a DEI. He is the definition of DEI, meaning he got in there not because of merit not because of self-determination, not because of skill. It's because he was ushered in because of the color of his skin and also the people he know that basically put him in that position and gave him a chance. And I'm speaking of his father-in-law. Because it says here that Sean Grayson, the former Sangamon County Sheriff's deputy charged with mur the murder of Sonia Massey, applied to work at the sheriff's office. He had a job reference from his girlfriend's father, a longtime Sangamon County Sheriff's deputy. That's how he got his job. WCIA requested through the Freedom of Information Act, Grayson's personnel file. The county released the files for his January 23. 23 job application Wednesday evening in his beneficiary designation along with his emergency contact information Grayson lists his girlfriend with the last name of Butterfield and they chose not to name Grayson's fiance her name needs to be put out there because just like Wade Wilson's girlfriend who was laughing in videos about after what he did and talking to him she's as sick as Wilson and his fiance is as sick as him Yes, Butterfield. This is Brenda Butterfield, the one who was taking up for her disgusting step grandson and talking about where is the consideration for him, his fiance and them as a family. And I said they can get some consideration maybe in the ninth level of hell. On his reference for hiring, one is the Scott Butterfield, a former sheriff deputy and his girlfriend's father. According to a Facebook post from the Sangamon County Sheriff's Office, Butterfield retired in 2020 after working for the office for 24 years. After 30 years in law enforcement, Deputy Scott Butterfield has decided to turn in his SCSO equipment and enjoy civilian life. Thank you for being a great representation of Sangamon County Sheriff's Office. Then he ushered in his son-in-law, which we see was a detriment to our community. And like I said, this family he was married into and him they are all the same because even after what he did and this man as an officer for 24 effing years to not see his record to not even inquire about him to just pat him on the back and because he looks like him and he's with his daughter to not even look into it who you're you're giving your reference to that says a lot about him as an officer for 24 years and i'm sure there are skeletons in that closet Mr. Butterfield advised me that Mr. Grayson is currently dating his daughter. I'm going to skip all that. Mr. Butterfield described Mr. Grayson as a mellow, non-confrontational person who has good communication skill. Mr. Butterfield highly recommended Mr. Grayson for employment with the Second Mind County Sheriff's Office. If Mr. Butterfield had any information about these prior um, situations where he was fired, reprimanded and everything else, and he made the excuse, oh, you know, due to the high stress situation, you know, I can overlook that, like I said. I would love for somebody to look into Scott Butterfield's records and, and look at his past and what he did as a police officer, because if he can overlook that about his son-in-law, we, we know how deep that rabbit hole can go. So the sheriff, Jack Campbell, said... Grayson's personnel file includes references from people I know well exactly not you doing your research into this person but because the person looks like you and recommended them that's why they get the job not on merit because of who you know and who looks like you the definition of DIE that they try and throw out there about us 
Normally, I seek such references and give more credence to those from individuals I trust and know to have integrity. Their insight is invaluable. That's why he needs to resign. He needs to either resign or be fired or let go or, or voted out. He needs to go because his judgment is it has cost someone their life. Um, he believed the, the father-in-law who cost somebody their life and hired a insufficient, disgusting murderer. Grayson worked at five law enforcement agency before Sagamon County Sheriff's Office, and none of that came across their radar. Now, you know, if this had been somebody who looks like us, they would have dug into his junior high school records or her junior high school records. <laughs> and if they cussed the teacher, they wouldn't have gotten the job. But this is not uncommon. Then the sheriff tried to say, oh, he wasn't aware of any of this an effing lie among comments from prior employers was that he needed more training um this is not unusual for deputies with grayson's experience i'm not gonna i'm not gonna sit here and listen and read i'll leave it up here on the screen this weak weak explanation because they're um explaining now because they can't hide they hired some a dei hire who was just deficient in every way and now everybody is trying to cover their ass he listened to a Scott Butterfield who didn't look into anything. He didn't look into anything. They all excused it, swept it under the rug, and brought in their DEI hire. But now the Butterfield family has not ish to say, even though um, the publication here, the news agency, is reaching out to them. They haven't heard anything. But I wanted to read that because I knew I knew that after hearing he had so many jobs in a short amount of time, I wanted to know who was the person that ushered him in because looking at his record looking at everything that was said looking at his military record there is no way he should have been able to be a police officer or anyone would accept him it's the good old boys club it's the you're a part of my tribe club it's the my colorless skin club and we're just going to look over everything because you look like me club which cost a woman her life yeah can y'all stop asking me questions that you can google do I look like Do I look like Google? Don't ask me how can I become a, a sheriff deputy, a police officer. Google it. Like you grown. Google the qualifications. Stop asking people stuff that's Googleable. My name is Reed, not Google. It couldn't be me. I woulda, woulda, shoulda, coulda. You wouldn't have. Y'all think y'all can react differently from us? We out here trained. You couldn't. You say that because you have time to think right now. We don't have time to think when shit pop off. So again, you could never. You would never. Put the badge on and let me see you do it. I usually have some comeback for that. But I don't. Her name, let me tell you her name, because a lot of you are going to be like, Pastor, who was that? Her name is Jalicia Reed, a.k.a. Lisa Deer, a black sheriff deputy of Owl Wait, Witt County, located in Virginia. Mm. She's defending the one that took Sonia Massey life. It be our own mother. Oh, oh I'm sorry, y'all. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, so we find out that Lisa is not even her name, but she wants to be a colorless woman named Lisa. That's how she wants to act. So that's how she'll be treated. To sit up here and say that the job of an officer is not easy. Um, before you sign up to be an officer, you should be fully informed what you're getting yourself into. And if you can't handle it, don't do it. Um, but don't sit up here and talk ish about people who are they're pointing out the fact that this person stepped up to be a police officer. And if it's too much for you, then you need to step down and find something else to do. Nobody makes you sign up to be a police officer. Um, people say they need police officers to enact the law, which they're not really in, you know, if you have enough money, the law doesn't apply to you. But she's drunk off of the power. You can see a common denominator between a lot of these police officers include the police officers that uh, beat up Tyree Nichols, which I did a whole thing on that. People... <laughs> Um, from his color statements to their actions as black police officers, which we knew they get the book thrown at them for what they did. 
but she is the same. She's sitting up here in her uh, little get up uh, with her shades on with this arrogant attitude talking about us, the blue. And her black ass um, really feels like the blue covers up her brownness. Um, I don't know why she thinks that because it's very visible to me. So when she takes that outfit off and she just happened to be walking in a certain area, there are certain people who um, they don't have the brown skin and they don't see her blue outfit or badge and they would treat her like any other common um, in word on the street. And I think that's what she needs to have happen to her so she can get her wake up call, you know, like the Candace Owens and all of that. They need to be embarrassed. They need to be taken down a not notch or two. They need to a reality check um, so they can understand their place. So they won't get this big head thinking that, you know, everybody have your back because I could have swore in a Black Lives Matter um, march which was peaceful. There were police officers who were looking for a reason to put their hands on somebody, but nobody was being violent. And one of the undercover officers, which was a black officer, male officer, they grabbed him, beat him, and they didn't even know he was a freaking officer. So that tells you everything you need to know. But her trying to defend Sean Grayson's um, action when a lot of her fellow police officers are saying, this is not what you are supposed to do. Um, they didn't see any danger. They wouldn't have pulled their weapon. And she's talking about a split second. Then if you can't handle the pressure of the split second, you have a responsibility because you have the ability per the state to take somebody's life. And if that's too much pressure for you, you need to get out of this profession, period. If you can't hack it, you can't step up. You don't have the ability or the skill then leave the job because you're going to cost somebody their life. But no, you get to walk around with a badge and this suit and you feel like you can do whatever the hell you want to do. You get to set, have a gun on the side of you and you get to choose if somebody lives or die. And that's what you're drunk off of until it's the other way around. Then you want the sympathy of we're out here dealing with people who will shoot back. That's the job you signed up for. So do your damn job the right way or back out. This is she is disgusting. I feel like she was doing this for clout. But like I said, uh, there are quite a few people who think like this. The Clarence Thomases of the world. The she has a very, very black name, which is her real name. But we'll go ahead and continue to call her Lisa because that's exactly how she's acting. And to justify this shooting, she doesn't need to be in this profession. Any police officer that is justifying this. They shouldn't be a police officer video on TikTok, calling it a public service announcement. I'm speaking for myself, but I'm probably speaking for a large majority of other officers out there. If we're driving on the freeway in our police car, get the f out of the way. Get the f out of the way. If you merge and we follow behind you and we merge too, you're probably in trouble. The best way to find that out is get the f out of the way. I can go 90 miles an hour. You can't. You can't do that. So get the f out of the way. If us officers stay behind you long enough, we can find a reason to pull you over. So you might as well get the out of the way. Super simple. I wanted to show this video just to show you the common denominator, the common thread between these people. No different than the state's attorney that was speeding on her way to her home because she wanted to. And she was basically bullying the police officers who said that she was going what, almost 20 miles over the speed limit? And they were, she act like they were just supposed to let her go and they were inconveniencing her. You can see, and these are women. So if this is the aggressive, nasty attitude of a woman who is a police officer, who has some type of title, I can only imagine the, the men in the boys club and their attitude. This is disgusting. These are the people in uniform. These are the people on the street. They're harassing regular people. But notice, they will never have this much smoke for people who will shoot back. They'll never have this much smoke in drug dealing. They would never have this type of audacity with people who are actual criminals, who are willing to shoot back, who are willing to find out who they are and their family are. That's why they don't do that stuff anymore. They don't do these big drug busts. They don't find murderers and serial killers. They don't... Um, go after people that with with um some type of name or weight to them they don't do that because they'll end up having their life snuffed out they'll end up having their people's life snuffed out and the only thing they can do now is take somebody's life over jaywalking is pull you over because they're having a bad day on a random tuesday saying that they're all the way at the front door in the living room, this person is in the kitchen, and this woman who is 98 pounds to 102 pounds can heave boiling water that wasn't even in the pot at an officer and hit them.
before they have a chance to react or get out of the way. This is insanity. But I wanted to show this because the image of police officers right now with a lot of people is disgusting. Because everyone already knew that this is the attitude that they have. And because they always are trying to protect police officers, even in their wrong and their degenerate, and when they break the law themselves, this is what you get. You get painted with a broad brush. But I'm going to go ahead and leave it right here. I just wanted to bring light to the fact that the Butterfields, Scott Butterfield in particular, in particular, is the one who got this disgusting POS, Sean Grayson, his job by being his reference and got that woman killed because they put a DEI degenerate in that position. And I'll see you in the next one.